and people are losing hope. They think the days are over, we can't resist these forces. Anyhow, Jesus said, um, on a famous occasion, the gates of hell would not prevail against the church. With the unveiling of the monstrosity of the black beast at United Nation, Satan and his followers believe they are in full control of the world. Now is my time to take away all they have achieved. Do not be afraid for the wicked and perverted humanity. Do not be afraid. Stay focused and be in a state of grace and at peace. Forgive and love one another. My love and peace is with you all. Your loving mother, help of Christians. So that's very important that we, that to, you know, Holy Mother is to say not to be afraid of what is coming with the, with the great battle. Now theology teaches us that the Mother of God, the Immaculate One, is given the job description to do away with Satan. And this all leads into the, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. The world over the past couple of centuries has gone the way of subtle darkness. The Mother of God, in her messages, her locutions to an Italian mystic, mystic named Father Gobbi, passed away some 10 years ago, her messages are clear to him that cultural Marxism, the denial of God, and the raising of self, money, comfort, all these things that appeal to our lower nature have become the new God. The seven deadly sins have become rewards for hard work and a life well lived. Religion's been turned around. And so the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is to restore things unto the way of God. That in these hearts, these spiritual hearts of ours, rather than doubt, darkness, vice, self, comfort, money, excess, indulgence, being the norm, being the spirit, the dark, horrible spirit, the reign of the sacred heart of Jesus, her son, the truth, the power that is, the eternal truths. This spirit will dwell in our hearts and that man, mankind, shall turn to its creator, seeing the error of their way, of our way, and take seriously at some stage in our life our baptismal promises to say no to evil, to no to the subtlety of Satan. God has designed that he would forever be our father, but the design is also that we would be able to engage with and feed from forever mother. Mary is that person. And it's for that reason why I believe that in the Gospel of John, in chapter 19, verse 27, where Jesus on the cross says, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. And from that moment, John the beloved, which represents all of us, each one of us in our own right, is called to be Jesus' beloved. He takes Mary into his own home, which is into his own heart. And therefore, if we do not take our lives and place them into the heart of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, then what happens is our world can't come back to the Garden of Eden. It can't come back to paradise. So the story of authentic Christian masculinity is one that has to be told and every man needs to know that that is his vocation to be protector, to be provider, and together with his wife, to be procreator. The rosary. I've had so many rosaries in my life. People have been giving me rosaries and I've taken them, I've prayed with them. I used to carry my rosary in my pocket for years when I was working, but all I did was carry my rosary. I never prayed it. But over the years, I slowly begin to understand the power of that humble rosary and its connection with suffering and its connection with 
spiritual combat and its connection with Our Lady. And it dawned on me then, I thought, for 10 years he led the Rosary Group, praying with these elderly parishioners. And we said, you know, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. She's standing right by his bed. Bernadette Subaru, she never said she saw Mary. She said she saw a beautiful lady. The three children of Fatima, they didn't say they saw Mary. They saw a beautiful lady. Any time there's been an apparition of our Blessed Mother, it's always been a beautiful lady. My father, it was a beautiful lady. That's a powerful experience. The purpose of this world is to prepare us for the life to come. Paul says this world is passing, and he's quite correct. This world is passing. It's a fleeting world. It's the shadow world. We are living in the shadow. The real life is what is coming. What is coming? What is coming when Jesus returns and the life that is there after that? What is coming when we are living with Jesus in that heavenly and divine existence that we call heaven? That is the real life because that life is eternal. This life is temporary. So what's the purpose of this life? 